It's time for the Wrestling Perspective Podcast. I'm Dennis Ferrer. That guy's Lars Fredrickson. Lars, uh, a lot to talk about, a lot to get to. Do you want to talk about the big news of the week, or do you want to get the emails? I'm letting you call the ball, Goose. Well, you know, I think there's so much news that I, I actually kind of want to go over it with our guest today, you know, just to kind of get her perspective. After all, this is the wrestling perspective. But obviously, there's so many things happening, you know, in the world of wrestling. I mean, it's hard to, you know, throw a rock and not hit something that's like shaking up the system. I tell you what, I would pay to be at the McMahon family Christmas party this coming year because that <laughs> has to be a great shindig. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, yes. Yes. I think that would be very fun. Uh, Mickey James will be up here in a little bit. We're going to get to as many emails as we can before she shows up. And uh, we'll just knock them out. We promised we get to them all. We're going to get to them all. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Bill from Kansas City wants to know, uh, Dennis and Lars, what are both of your favorite local promotions where you live? West Coast Pro for me. Um, there's also a new startup uh, indie called Oasis Pro, which I haven't been to yet. But uh, I have, and, you know, for me, West Coast Pro, I go at pretty much every show. All right. Uh, for me, there's a couple. XICW is a good one. Clash. Uh, I like Clash a lot here in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, there's Sanctuary. Uh, Sanctuary is a great one. I'm trying to think of what else. There's one more. Uh, Insane Revolution, I think it's called. That's uh, Rhino's Promotion um, down in Monroe, Michigan. All those are great. Uh, and listen, if you give me free tickets, I'll go to whatever local promotion you want me to. <laughs> I am a whore for free stuff. Well, you know, it's so Vinny Massaro, who was who has been a guest on this podcast, uh, does uh, a lot for the school and West Coast Pro. I think he's even on maybe on the book. He helps book it. So, I, you know, he, he's always been very gracious with me. And so I have a standing ticket there. So that's that's pretty cool because I get to go, you know, and then I can bring whoever I like. So they're really nice people, super accommodating. And you get to see so many great stars from. I mean, I've seen stars from Noah, Pro Wrestling Noah, New Japan, AAA, you know, the list goes on and on, on. Maggie from Bulgaria, which, Whoa. Has a, yeah, she has a Whoa. podcast here on uh, Fightful, which I love it. Uh, Maggie and Rob have one great show. I've been a guest on that once. You should do it. It's a fun uh, I'd love to. One. It's a I'd fun one. Uh, Maggie wants it, says, I love how you and Lars, Dennis and Lars, casually rip on each other throughout the interviews. Do you guys ever get mad at each other? No. No. Uh, the, I, I will say this. We used to have a guy that hosts a show with us who uh, didn't know how to take a joke. So no. I we would we do it, and then we get these hateful texts about how I'm not funny or I don't know how to host a show. And I made it quite clear with Lars. Like, look, make fun <laughs> of me all you want. When when it just became Lars, I and Petey, I said, make fun of me all you want. I can take a joke. If I need to be the butt of it, do it. Uh, I'm all about the laugh. And Lars – yeah. You said I mean, the same I, thing. Yeah, I mean, I I grew up in a place where you can you couldn't take yourself too seriously. You know, there was no room for any kind of narcissistic behavior. And I and I honestly believe that if if you can't make fun of yourself or just make fun of everything in the world, then you suck. Yeah. So you just suck, and probably somebody I just don't want to be around. You know, because that's it, that that always you know when people can't be self-deprecating or, or, or take a joke. They just, they're just telling me how stuck up their own ass they are, you know? But I will say it's, it took me a little bit to ease in and get comfortable with kind of a, a little jab or a joke here and there at you because. Well, shut the fuck up and get on to the next goddamn question, Dennis. Jesus Christ. No one gives a <laughs> shit about how you feel about this. You're right. Uh, Michael from Arizona. Who's the most famous person, you know, that listens to your podcast? Me. <laughs> Yeah, Lars, maybe. Uh, I, you know, I don't get ah. many people that say they listen to the podcast at all, honestly. And if you're famous and you listen, email us at Wrestling Perspective Podcast. Yeah. No, no, Wrestling I, Perspective I actually, at But honestly, I get a lot of feedback from a lot of different people, a lot of different kinds of people. And, uh, you know, it's probably some of the wrestlers that we've interviewed along the way that's maybe the most famous. I, I don't, I haven't really kept a tally or stats, but, uh, I do know that it has come across the ears of some um, some some higher profile uh, people in the world. Let's just say. 
Well, if you're famous and you listen, thank you. If yeah. you're not famous, get famous and then yeah. tell everybody about it. So exactly. uh, yeah. D from Hazleton, John Cena's bald spot, go. I don't really care too much about John Cena. So, uh, you know, it's like, uh, you know, uh, God bless him. I mean, if there is a God. Yep. And that bald spot was amazing. I don't know if you've seen the picture or not. I'll have no, to send it to you. You know, I I don't really, I, you know what? It's, I feel like when people like uh, John Cena, who's done so much for humankind, which, cause he really has yeah. with all of his charity work and all the things that he's done, regardless if I'm a fan of his or not, uh, I don't really, you know, want to kick some dude who's not really down, first of all, and number two, <laughs> For having a bald spot i think that's uh it's fucking stupid if i could be down like he's down right now i'd be all right i wish i, I was mean, john cena down but, but i mean here's a guy that's like literally goes out of his way to like you know make little kids happy or give you know little kids their dreams their wishes i cannot fault that guy i mean like i said i don't like him as a regular i never a uh, wrestler i don't like uh, never liked his gimmick never I understood why he was so big. He he had a certain charisma, and I'll always go back and protect him because, like I said, he uh, you know gave him me his time of day. So, but I I can't beat up a guy for a bald spot, you know. Uh, yeah, because I'm still young. Yeah, <laughs> I'd hate that karma to come back at me. Uh, Kurt Franklin wants to know: Can you both talk about your thoughts on Dominic Mysterio Jr.? I I love what this kid has done. I was one of those few, I wouldn't say few, but I was one of the early guys that like, you know what, he's riding his dad's coattails. He won't be anything more than he is now. But what he's done in the past six to eight months, dude, this kid's legit. I I love everything Dominic Mysterio Jr. is doing right now. There's if he can continue this, like this growth and showing different sides and you know, I turning hill is the best thing that ever happened to him right now. I definitely think that him turning heel was the best thing that he could have done. Uh, I do like, you know, I, I like him a lot more recently than I have in the past. I've never thought he was riding his daddy's coattails because they're obviously two different wrestlers. Um, you know, obviously there's no one ever going to be like Ray, you know, um, I definitely think that he's in on that path to get out of his father's shadow I mean, Cody, I think, is long out of his father's shadow. So is Dustin, even though a lot of people want to bring that up and compare them to their dad. But that's unfair to the to the spawn, really, just because it's two totally different, you know, learning curves. So and that's one of the things you got to remember. You cannot look at Rey Mysterio's career and in the same pair of glasses, look at Dominic Mysterio. You just can't do it. It's just not fair to either one. Um, I, and, uh, but yeah, I think, you know, I think the little bandana, bandana thing is, is, eh, you know, I mean, it, it looks, looks a little too contrived, but, um, then again, it's WWE you know. gangster. If, if gangster yeah, but I mean, but, but, but you, but I, you know, for, I think that a lot of people aren't going to take that seriously because no. of, of what it is. Because he's not a, he's not like one of those guys where you look and you think he's tough. No. He's a, he he's a chicken shit you know a heel kind of trip. So to to dress him up like a like a cholo Mexican gangster kind of style thing or or just gangster kind of thing. I don't know. It just doesn't you know. I knew real cholos growing up. Dominic Mysterio, you know. I'll be part, probably maybe part of his culture or whatever his growing up. I don't know. I, I don't know Dominic, but, uh, but uh, yeah, I just think it's kind of, it's a little hokey. It's a little, little hard to get behind. Miguel from Reno, the landscape of pro wrestling has drastically changed since you had Tony Khan on the show. Uh, Ring of Honor isn't the same since Ian Riccoboni has been on the show as well. What are your thoughts on how pro wrestling has just changed in that short of time? Also, congrats on the, the announcement of the radio show. Will you guys be taking phone calls? Um, not right away. We've talked about it. It's in our court. Mm -hmm. uh, XM has been kind enough to say whatever we want to do, we can do. But we want to kind of do this kind of keep it the same format. Uh, 
who knows if we both find time in our lives, you know, Lars is going overseas. He's having a kid. Uh, I'm busy yeah. uh, waiting on Lars to get home. <laughs> but uh, we've talked. Maybe if this translates well into a radio show, maybe we'll add something else to it. But we just talked about it. But the landscape of wrestling, this guy, I mean, even now we got this email last week before the whole WWE stuff yeah. came down. Yeah. Yeah. That alone. But mm. I, I mean, l- let me ask you this, because uh, mm. you have this and we'll probably talk about this with her, but not to this extent with Mickey James in a few minutes. You you have the backlash from WWE going to Saudi Arabia. Everybody saying, "Well, we don't know if that's completely true just right. yet." But I'm it's leading into a "what if" question, though. And right. uh, you you have everybody talking about the blood money and how they won't watch if WWE is over in Saudi Arabia. What's the backlash if a Saudi Arabian? Co- I mean, you see what happens with the Live Golf Tournament right now. What happens? to wwe if a saudi company does buy them you know that's a good question the first thing i thought about is like anytime that they're in those middle eastern countries i believe that the women have to basically they can't wear anything short or anything you know uh revealing you know Mm -hmm. so i don't know if that's a good or bad thing um i definitely know that from my own experience that that's i don't necessarily know if that culture is entirely open-minded i don't know i mean you know even christianity and other sort of religions are closed-minded to us to a certain degree but i mean i don't want to get lost in all that stuff or offend anybody if that's you know what you know actually i don't give a fuck if i offend you um yeah. but my point is i guess is that i don't necessarily know if it's if it, it'll i don't know i mean there are westernized kind of I don't know, Dennis. It's a hard one. You know, it's a very hard one. I will say this. Uh, one of my best friends, Pud, shout out to him, who actually just broke his neck in a car accident uh, a couple weeks ago. So he's healing up. Sent me a text when it looked like the Saudis were buying a WWE. And he says, I'm done watching WWE to this moment on. I will go back and watch all the great stuff from the 90s, the Attitude Era, the 80s stuff. But from this moment on, I'm not following the product. Yeah, I, I think that there's other choices than just going back into the past. I mean, I, I think you got NWA. I think you got MLW. I think you got Impact. I mean, I think if you like the circus show, you can watch AEW. That's more like an outlaw indie kind of thing. Um, so, I, And there's New Japan. There's Japanese wrestling. There's Deathmatch wrestling. There's so much choice out there. That regardless if the WWE gets sold um, to a to a totally different country, um, then I, I, I'm 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 sure there, it would be business as usual. I don't necessarily know if there would be that many changes. I don't. Th- but I, don't, I mean, I don't think they're they're smart businessmen. It's I too, mean, to, yeah. I mean, it's but yeah. But if they start, I I feel like where the I think where attention would be created is in culturally, because America is definitely way different culturally than any of the Middle Eastern countries. That's just a fact. It's that's not, you know, anything other than just fact, you know, and if you've been to any of those countries, you would see it for yourself. It's very closed and very. um, Yeah. I, I will fact. say one thing you hit on something that will be interesting if they bought this company and, you know, as of, you know, this recording, they've not been sold. Vince is back, but they've not sold. But I think that's actually more of a detriment to the product than it getting sold is having, you know, oh, yeah. Vince McMahon back. I think that 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 I don't know. I just I think feel his like time it's is done. His time is long past done. It's been past done for a for for a while and it's just the show and the momentum and the and the wrestling and everything else and the i mean it, that show is just like a freight train moving forward you know but the the one thing uh you said to watch out for is what rules if if a saudi company did buy them what rules would change for women wrestling i mean can you wear the bikinis again are you gonna have to you know even though it's probably an American company on American soil with, with uh, you know, an American audience, are they gonna are they gonna implement Saudi values into that? Pro- you you just don't know. Yeah, I mean, I I would have to to do a deep dive into Saudi politics and Saudi 
you know, because I mean, a lot of those Middle Eastern countries are religious, right? So what is in line or, or in, in tow of their society? It's, so I'm a, I don't necessarily know if, if they would, you know, sort of enforce those types of, of ideology onto a company that's making a lot of money. I don't know. I mean, this it's 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 going it's a debate it's a debate and it's there's a, i'm sure there's a lot of opinions and uh i don't know with i don't things, really yeah, go ahead all things being equal if a saudi company does want to buy this podcast we are listening uh <laughs> <laughs> um just know that uh we are slightly more cheaper than the wwe is no not we're not much, but no, just no, no no we're not no. no we're open to negotiations we'll just no, see. I, honestly uh, the reason why i love this podcast is because there is no fucking bosses me no, and you are the bosses it, you're the boss i work for you you're the boss pal no i'm sasha boss um you're sasha banks yeah that's right money uh, I don't even know how she does it. That was the lamest thing I've ever done. Yeah, Thank it you. was. One of them. Uh, I, I, but I will say uh, here in a couple of minutes, Mickey James will come up. Thank you so much for your emails this week. Uh, remember, wrestlingperspective at gmail.com. Shoot us an email. We'd love to hear about your thoughts, your hot takes, your opinions. You can ask us any kind of questions. Uh, we do have one more question, and this will wrap up the segment before Mickey shows up. What is your – I didn't even look at the name. I'll have to go back here. Uh, Jane H. from Atlanta, what is your Mount Rushmore of favorite all-time tag teams? Top four. Top Ooh. four all-time favorite tag teams. Uh, well, I, I, these go ahead. Do you want to go first? I, I would say you and I should alternate from four to one. Um, I mean, it'll be loose. I don't see that's, I don't, I don't want to do that because I mean, I, I couldn't rank the top four. It would just yeah. be, the, it would just be top four. I couldn't go number four. Yeah. You know? See, that's in, in, I think you can make a case for number one in each of these, but for our favorites, uh, Legion of Doom, Road Warriors would be on that list. Um, Rock and Roll Express. Mm -hmm. ah, boy, this is this is super tough. Um, do you have two? While I think of two more, well, mine would be you know, Rock and Roll Express and the Heart Foundation for sure. Uh, also would give a big shout to Gold Dust and Stardust. I love that tag team. I actually, if you can see, I have a little painting of Gold Dust and Stardust right there. But, uh, and a, probably the number one team or something like that, it probably the Midnight Express or, I mean, there's been so many great, I mean, I'm, four, four, Mount, four people on, four faces on Mount Rushmore. So that's four teams, right? So who else you got? Ah, boy, I might say Demolition. I keep going back and forth. Is it Demolition or the Nasty Boys? Because there was just something about either one of those tag teams during that era. I love the Nasty Boys too. I, I would I would obviously have to pick the Road Warriors, you know. But I mean, it's very hard to pick a top four. It really is. I mean, and then do you go the one-off tag teams like uh, uh, Hogan Savage? I mean, they were a tag team. They yeah, had a tag team yeah. name. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, true. I'm not sure I could put them on there. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. there's just so many of those two guys that, uh, you know what? I, maybe uh, uh, Randy Orton and Edge. Randy Orton and Edge. Rated RKO. Right. Yeah. I, I see, but that's how good they were. I forgot about them. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm just thinking those traditional t tag teams. The I mean, Gold Dust and Stardust, the whole, I mean, Ole and Arn. I mean, that was a fucking powerhouse. Like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, shit, the, the Russians, man, Nikita and Ivan. But then there was, you know, obviously Crusher was part of that trip. Um, well, Barry Darso, you know, yeah. so Barry Darso was, I mean, I mean, there's so many great tags. There's so many great tags. I love, <laughs> I mean, FTR. How do you not put FTR or the Briscoes on there too? It's, it's, it's hard. But I, number one, I would say I could pick a number one. That's easy. And that's the Hart Foundation, Bret Hart and Jim the Anvil. But, you know, two through 10, man, that's tough. That's what, tough. 
Well, give me one tag team everybody loved, but you never got. Because I always kind of like that question more than the, what's your the, favorite. <laughs> the Can-Am Express. Um, uh, let's see here. One tag team that everybody loved, but I never got. I'm I'm gonna say, uh, boy, uh, Young Bucks. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say that too. I I you know I I had a period where I did enjoy what they did, but I feel like it never really progressed. You know, it it kind of stayed the same kind of thing. It's just flip floppity floppity flip. There's really no. It was exciting when you first saw it, right? PWG mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, it was really, you know, it was different, you know, it was very high spotty and, and very Lucha esque. So I, I could get my mind around it, but, uh, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't, I, now these days, I, I feel like anytime I see one of their matches, I've seen it before. I, I, I think they're great on the mic. And when they play a Hill character, that's great. But for me, and it's not an insult to them because uh, they've done something a lot of tag teams can't do. And they've taken that indie style and brought it to TV. But for me, as a, I, I would say I'm more of a traditional television wrestling fan. Yeah, I, I'm nothing against, you know, them and their talent, you know. No. But uh, it, it, as a fan, when I watch it, it doesn't translate well to me. I mean, it's almost like that same question we got last week with Kenny Omega. Why is Japan Kenny Omega uh, well, cause, so much yeah, better yeah. than American? Well, like I said, I feel like he's more of an anime character. <laughs> yes. You know, I think that that's how he translates. I, well, I really honestly think that he could be a guy, you know, even his name is a guy in a in a manga. You know what I mean? So. You know, I, I don't know. Well, I, I, I tell you what, we'll wrap this up. Uh, before we do, uh, this will be out before Friday the 13th. You yeah. are having another auction coming up on that Friday. Uh, I am. At 1.30, 1 o'clock p.m.? Uh, it's 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right. Make sure you guys get over to What Not, right? I believe is the app. What Not, yeah. Yeah, if you go to any of my socials, whether it be uh, – I, most of the time on my Lars Fredrickson page, I'll put it up in the stories. Um, and there's a link normally that will get you straight to my page. And what you want to do is bookmark it and then follow me because when you bookmark the show, you get a reminder in case like you have something, you know, 20 other things like I have to do in a day. But if you go over to Laz's Laka in the, uh, the bio, you can just click on that link. And if you click on that link, you get ten dollars off of your first purchase, and right now I'm doing this thing. And I'm uh, a lot of updates. I have got a new uh, thing happening with them this year. Uh, it's going to be a lot of really cool things. I'm going to be giving away a guitar at one point, um, one of my own personal signature uh, models with my signature pickups. I'm going to be doing a big show around that. But this next show is a record show, so it's all of my personal vinyl. That I, it's like my doubles or stuff that I just haven't listened to in years. I mean, I've let go of some of the very, you know, some of the first records I've ever bought just because I don't listen to them anymore. And, you know, I figure, I feel like people would, would enjoy them more, you know, and than I, will I say do this, at this point. As a guy who has popped in and watched many of your, your whatnots, uh, it's really cool because if you win the bid, he signs it right there on camera, whatever you want inscribed into it. So yeah. you don't get that from any other auction house anywhere. So even if you don't go to buy, go to watch and just catch that vibe because it is very interactive, very fun, and I enjoy watching it. But uh, wrestling perspective, gmail.com. Make sure you get your questions, hot takes, anything you want us to discuss or talk about with you. We will do it. Mickey James, when we come right back. Go. Lars, she's yeah. here. Radio talent, sometimes wrestler. 
Mickey James is joining us. Mickey, uh, we we kid with that intro because <laughs> you've, you, phenomenal in the ring, amazing radio okay. talent on Busted Open. Uh, that's when I first heard of you was on Busted Open. I Are don't you know serious? About, no, I'm not serious. <laughs> I've actually I've actually met you once on accident as I followed PD Williams around the impact many, many, many years ago. So uh, I think you may call me creepy, but that's just oh. neither here nor there. Wow. You did. That's just a nickname. That's just yeah. a nickname. It's We're just, hoping that he out. It stuck with me from high school. I don't know, guys. Um, but Mickey James, big match coming up Friday the 13th, hard to kill, uh, title versus career. And uh, I, I know we have talked about a bunch of stuff that we're going to talk to you about, but I have to ask you, and I don't know if this is a fair question to you, but almost like the Rolling Stones and Ric Flair, when you mention a career versus title match in wrestling, does anybody really just say, hey, this is it, guys, I'm calling it a night? Or is this, you know what, I'm going to take a break in five years if I feel like wrestling again, yeah. I'll come back. I know. That word retired really doesn't happen in wrestling very often, but I just feel like I'm in a really good place and I've done so much and I just didn't know what else I had left to prove, honestly, mm. aside proving that i still belonged and proving that I could be a champion again and I could, you know, be an awesome champion, hopefully. Um, yeah. And I had to put my back against the wall, I think. And I think it had to force, I just had a lot going on. And just with the whole landscape and everything that's happened in the last two years, even, um, I do feel like it's time, uh, or it's clipping up on the heels of that time to kind of like transition, not just because body wise or, oh, it hurts a little bit more for longer and recovery times, but more because, you know, my son's eight now and I've had a hell of a career and I want to be home more and, I love, you know, helping younger talent. I love working behind the scenes. I love stuff like that. Um, but I also have other businesses and other interests that I want to explore and do and devote some time to. And there's only, you know, so many days in a year and so many hours in a day. And I'm stretched really thin. But, um, you know, it's this, the whole last rodeo has been really important to me. And I've been training harder than ever, especially if I'm going to have to go up against Jordan, who is a phenomenal athlete. She's a phenomenal champion. And um, yeah. Yeah. But as far as the retire word, I thought it was important because it's like, I don't have to champ. I don't have to be cha champion again, you know, after this one, I'll say after this one, because I've, everything's on the line here and, and put my back against the wall. But um, I'm really satisfied with my career and all the things that I've been able to do, you know, so I don't really, need to keep doing it. And I certainly want to be able to go out on the top of my game. Yeah. Well, well, you know, when I first saw you pop back up in impact, I thought, okay, the women's division is going to get more competitive and it's just going to get better just for the sheer simple fact that, that, that you're there. And one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on, not only because of the pay-per-view, but it's actually just serendipitous in the timing, because when you started with, you know, the wrestling, the first time people got eyes on you was all about the bra and panties match and all that yeah. stuff. And then you and that generation helped change that to become something completely different where people actually took the women's wrestling serious and got emotionally yeah. invested into that. And so, you know, on through your career, here you are about to retire, let's just say, hopefully not, who knows, right? But do you think at, in the current state that we're in, do you think that the wrestling business has taken a, a few steps back? Um, well, in what capacity? Because I feel like there's nothing hotter than women's wrestling in the sense of, uh, you know, because we're getting so many more opportunities that we never got before. And it's a really hot time, um, for women's wrestling. And there's more women training to be wrestlers than ever. And there's a lot of talent out there. Whereas five, 10 years ago, that wasn't really the case as much as it is now today. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that you have a situation with Mandy Rose, right, where she gets mm -hmm. fired. And then you got Vince McMahon coming back into a company when he's done things as just as bad or not, or not worse. I mean, let's just say, I mean, you know, it's not hypothetical. It's just the facts. So yeah. what I'm asking is, is like the business is allowing this to happen, right? It's his company, right. whatever it is. But do you see that in the big picture that this is a step backwards in any way? Yeah, I guess I don't put the Mandy Rose thing and the Vince coming back thing in the same 
even on the same level because Vince is the owner of the company. He has been, even when he stepped down, he was still the owner of the company and, and Mandy was not an employee. She was a, a independent contractor of the company. Um, so I would more like equate hers to the riddle situation in the sense of like, he's had multiple chances and his thing. And this was like a one to, I don't know all the ins and outs cause I'm not there anymore of that. Um, but I think the last two years of just like watching that landscape of it shifting hands um, of like whenever all those allegations came out and then it shifted over to Hunter and to Stephanie, seeing Stephanie come up, I thought that was major progression. I was really excited because we all thought that was going to be the next step anyway, is that it would yeah. go to Shane and to Stephanie um, and to Hunter in that respect. Um, and now to see him come back, but I, feel like it's because i mean there's it's been being put in a position for sale to get sold in the last you know the last two years or whatever ever since nick Khan came on kind of thing i felt like that was really his job is to make it a marketable product for a buyer um and so it seems to me that it seems like close to that happening which is why Vince has come back you know he stepped down due to all of that stuff because obviously it was hurting the share prices it was hurting all of those things um so I'm assuming those are all big like business decisions that are way out of my like shareholders uh you know people on the board stuff like that that I'm not in those meetings I would like to be in some of those meetings yeah so. I kind of want to be a fly on the wall just to I would love yeah yeah just a little fly sponge <laughs> you, you have been just about every promotion the last couple of years you're one of the few people who have thrived wherever she went uh you are doing this career versus title match in impact wrestling why impact wrestling why jordan because i i i can't I know that you've had multiple promotions, multiple opportunities, multiple women that you could do easily have this match with, and you chose this promotion with Jordan. What was your thinking behind coming back home to Impact? Uh, well, because you said it, coming back home to Impact, I think Impact was the first person or the first company to really see something in me when I was just Alexis Lurie. They gave me opportunities, not just me. They've given so many people opportunities, and if you look at their roster – um, the amount of stars that have come out of there, the amount of stars that they've helped make, you know, um, and I don't know that they always get that credit that they that they deserve. But also when I came back to Impact the second time as Mickey James in this very like kind of crossroads of my life, that's where hardcore country was born. That's where she was created. That's where, you know, she really I started to get this whole new steam as far as this reinvention of myself where I could really just be myself. Um, so it just seemed fitting like for them to give me the opportunity, not only for as gracious as they were, you know, for me um, and to me for empower and the business on that aspect of, you know, so much television time and, and help to promote the show and the pay-per-view and um, but then an opportunity to come back and win the championship one more time. And so even when I dropped the championship last time, when I lost to Tasha, I was kind of, I was good. You know, I felt like, and that was kind of where the last rodeo came about was having that conversation with Tommy where I go like, I don't know what else I have to prove Tommy. Like, it's really, you know, I'm on a high right now. And I, I think all I wanted was something to like curtsy out and put a bow on my career and be happy with that. And I felt like I kind of had it, but then I was like, well, if we're going to do it, then I want to I'll test like a real test, like a real, and Jordan has remained being the champion this entire time and she's had some hella battles side by side on this whole you know as I'm doing the last rodeo she's held on to that championship the whole time and I said whoever I had a funny feeling it was going to be Jordan because she is such a dominant champion and she's yeah. so strong um and I think she's has been an awesome champion uh but it you know she was the one who held on to that championship this whole time as I've been on this journey you know and now we're at the top of the mountain and I'm, I'm grateful that she came out when she did, because I would have had to keep on fighting. And mm -hmm. Lord knows there was a lot of people that wanted, wanted that fight. I, I do have a follow-up question. Let's say okay. this Friday doesn't go the way you want. 
do you do you walk away from wrestling altogether? Do you stay uh, in a backstage role? Because for me, as a fan of yours, I view you and I know a lot of people may view this as an insult, but I view you as a wrestling lifer. You love the industry. I do. You're so smart. You 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 did empower. You're a great, you know, agent or producer. Uh, do, what what happens? After this match, if it doesn't go your way, you done? Do you walk away or do you still stick around in that kind of capacity? I I think I take a little break. I take a baby break and then I would probably come back and more behind the scenes stuff, you know, just a reset because it's closure and it would be painful. I think, you know, it's going to be painful if that is the end result. And I'm going to have to have like a little time because, you know, I don't want to even think about okay that's the end result right now because I don't know what I would do without wrestling like it gave me everything you know um but I do think that I would be extremely valuable and I think I'd find a, a lot of joy helping all the you know the stars we have now like level up their game and helping them kind of cultivate these characters and those storylines and stuff like that um to help take their game to the next level I think I would I would find a lot of that to be a lot of fun and a new challenge for me. I just didn't want to do it while I was still in the game. Cause I don't like that player co coach role. I think it blurs the line between the talent a lot. I think it, it, it questions their um, what they think your motives are sometimes, whether you're doing it for your own personal gain or you're doing it for theirs. Um, and I felt like if once I was ready to do something like that, I, I just couldn't wrestle anymore. Well, you know, the, one of the things that I, I that I've noticed about you in the last couple of years is is like you really found yourself, you know, who, who you Thanks. are. Um, I feel like, you know, 20 years ago, Mickey James is not what is current now. And, but now it's like more authentic than it's ever been. Do you think that being in a place that sort of, I don't know, appreciated um character development uh artistic freedom these these types of things that sometimes wrestlers don't have sometimes music musicians don't have um do you think that helped get you to that place to who you are right now uh, i definitely think the creation of hardcore country and allow being allowed to be have that freedom even the first time i came back um i feel like i even kind of lost a bit of that or i forgot that even when i came back this that last time with wwe because I was like, God, I wish I had done hardcore country there. Like she would have been awesome. Like the WWE audience would have loved her. But had I done that there, then when I came back at the Rumble as hardcore country, Mickey James as the knockouts world champion, would it have gotten the same reaction? Would it have been as special? Um, so that kind of was a beautiful piece to that in the sense, because I did end up being able to do that in a different way, just not the way I expected. Um, but I do feel like it helped. I think I was just in a, a real growing place then. And then now coming back and have a little bit, having that freedom of, of, you know, what I say and what I do and who I am. And I think because it is so close to home and it's not that far of a stretch of the truth, it's just, you know, the volume's just a little louder. So um, it definitely helps me in my comfort out there. Well, you know, one of the things, Mickey, and I want to sort of compliment you on it is when I met you in Las Vegas, you were super cordial and nice to me. And I've never actually ever heard anybody say one bad word about you. Do you oh, think that? Well, um, I mean, maybe there are people I haven't heard any. I'm sure there are some people. Well, I'm there's sure guys there's always <laughs> there's always. Yeah. But my point is, is that, you know, being able to walk on a WWE stage as the impact champion you know, these things that maybe would have never happened in a million years you've met now made happen. Uh, do you think part of that, like who you are as a human being was part of the reason why these things transpired? Oh God, I would hope so. I would hope so. Or hope in the fact that I was trustworthy, that I could be trusted to do good business or do the right business. And, and my intentions were never like, aren't, don't, come necessarily from a selfish place but what it's like a, a best for all place right. and if i win too then that's a that's like the icing on the cake you know right so yeah and i i get i have a follow-up because i'm not much of a dirt sheet guy but 
you know, when you made that leap, or wouldn't say leap, but when you went over to do the Royal Rumble, and this might be my only Royal Rumble question, there was inner rumblings within the wrestling community. Were were you under contract with Impact, or were you kind of a free agent, free to kind of do what you want, and you were being paid on a per uh, parents of basis with Impact at that moment? I'm um, I'm still, I guess, technically a free agent, but I have loyalty to Impact and everything that they've been able to do for me and with me. Um, so I guess technically one would say I'm a free agent. I, I just but that in my heart for the Rumble. Yeah, I was a, oh. technically a free agent. Okay. Yeah. But I was also the Knockouts World Champion and I was representing the Knockouts World Championship. Um, and I felt like it was important to if I was going to be a part of the Rumble that I be who I was and be Mickey James, be hardcore country and be the champion. And I thought it was that co-branding and that co-promotion of being able to recognize that championship on television on WWE's platform. And that was something that hadn't been done in 20 years, you know, for the men, uh, I think. Um, and certainly not in this era of professional television wrestling that we see this modern, I guess, era, you would call it. Um, it was a real opportunity to do something that had never been done before, you know, and so um, I wanted to make it special. And, you know, I figured it shoot for the stars and ask for it all and uh, see what happens. And I just got real lucky because I got it all, didn't I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, once again, you know, Friday night, big match for you, Jordan Grace. Um, I started thinking about your career earlier today. You kind of came in before the internet was really like a big thing, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, and now here we are where message boards. Yeah. Oh, I was on them. You know I mean? I, I was a tape trader. So it's like, you know, I understand that, uh, you know, even with a 14 year old Tony Khan, who was part of one of them. <laughs> But I guess what I've been, what I was thinking about is today's modern age, the way that even the companies react to an opinion online or, you know, the dirt sheets printing stuff and, you know, just this, it's just, it's crazy. Like the, it, we're, we are in a, uh, we have a plethora of information on the daily, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, coming you know, from where you come from, was that hard to kind of get used to seeing a lot of the information just out there for everybody to swallow? Yeah, I still, I still struggle with it. I still, still don't particularly love it. I think because it's like when, uh, you know, you go to see a magic show and then you go watch how they did all the magic tricks. It kind of ruins right. the show, um, for me. And I, and I can imagine <laughs> as a fan, and I know there's always going to be an audience for that behind the scenes stuff, but I think also there's zero regulation on wrestling media it's there's no fact checking or it's a lot of speculation or people's <laughs> opinions being reported as facts yeah, a I lot know. of times and then there's no disclaimers or or retractions of statements when they were incorrect or didn't really have like there's no like researching and developing and making sure that there's like you know a truth behind this you know idea that they've so that's the only thing whereas nowhere and nothing else can you report like that you can say allegedly i think they've gotten better but there's a lot of platforms out there reporting on professional wrestling and they're not always reporting the facts you know so that's kind of a tough bit too because you do have to know to sift through what is just opinion and what is actually factual well it's almost it's like a, a cause and effect i mean we had so many you know things happening just in the political world and in, yeah. you know where you had a lot of these you know fake news outlets and it's almost like it gave people license just to kind of make up shit on the fly you right know? so when when you do you are you one that sifts through this do you read this no. does, and is, does any of this interest you in any way the news no I even I don't watch the news news. Neither do I. Neither do I. It's depressing. If it bleeds, it leads. And if it's like, I, you know, I, if it's not and I feel like, there, you know, there's a lot of good out there in the world as well. And if we just, you know, just filled up half the that time with good stories uh, instead of glorifying all these bad stories and killers and 
school shootings or maybe there might be less of it because it's not making the headlines because we choose not to glorify it sometimes. I don't know. That's me being a hippie. And I don't, I know we need to know these things, but I also like to put on my rose colored glasses and pretend like they don't exist sometimes. Well, I'm glad we're talking about this because you are on busted open radio. And I think I, I know we all know a lot of wrestlers, uh, probably you more than Lars and I put together. Do you find it, and a lot of people don't understand this because I knew a lot of baseball players who went into broadcasting, and then you know when they had to talk about someone they knew, you could almost tell that they were either trying to veer it away and not give their true opinions about this mm -hmm. person because they don't want to make them mad because they're friends. Right. You now as a pundit, not a reporter, but pundit, do you find yourself having to tiptoe that line between, hey, I really know this person, but boy – uh, in this topic, I may have to uh, give up my true opinion. I'm going to shy away from it. Or do you yeah. all in? Um, how, how do you handle that? I don't know, because Busted Open is so laid back. And I think David and Tommy both know me well enough to know that I'm not going to go out of my way to bury anyone or to. Will you bury Dave now for us? No. <laughs> Please, I love David. I love you know, him. Dave. Dave. So let me just still wait for him to message me back. Dave, <laughs> Dave LaGreca is the reason why this show is going to be on Sirius XM. So it's like, I, we love Thanks. Dave LaGreca. We're LaGreca heads. We are super fans of Busted Open. <laughs> so Dennis, you're fucking fired. You know, <laughs> fucking briefcase and get out of here. Mickey James, answer the damn question. <laughs> um. I do think, well, because I don't think that I get any of those hard, hard hitting questions. I don't think that I get, I mean, I'll get my opinion or I'll give my opinion on it. You know, if I don't have something nice to say, unless I just want to, for whatever reason, I just don't like that person, which there's very, I don't feel like there's a lot of people that I don't, I dislike. Um, I don't really, I don't go out of my way to bury people. I may accidentally slip up and it could be taken out of context and, and, made to seem like I'm trying to bury someone, but I'm not, that's never really my intention. You know, you know what? Re sorry. Wrestlers are the big, biggest sensitive bunch I've ever known in my entire life. You can't say even the slightest, they get all heated and argue. It's you know, sideways well, about it. Yeah. I, it's insane. And it's like half of them can't even defend themselves in the real, right. in the real world. So whatever, yeah. but okay. So you are married to a professional wrestler, mm -hmm. um, a very talented one. How in the world do you guys keep this relationship prosperous? You obviously have children together. We uh, have one. We have a little boy. He's sorry, eight. Sorry, yeah. one. Okay. Uh, he's eight years old. That's part of the reason why you maybe want to step back a little bit and spend time. And I get that. I'm 51, was on tour for the first 10 years of my boy's lives, right? And I got a new one coming in June. And I, I'm going to have a little girl and I want to be there as much as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. how do you and him find that way to uh, uh, meet and see eye to eye with the business being the way it is? Yeah. I mean, it's been a learning curve. It's been a whole, you know, that balance compromise, that word never, never been really good at compromise, but that's how you make marriage work. And I think it's also, we respect each other's careers enough. And with now, if with where I'm sitting, I, you know, we can kind of cherry pick. I can ch kind of cherry pick what sh shows and bookings and stuff that I do. And we kind of reverse our schedules. So if he's on the road, I'm typically home. If he's I'm on the road, he's typically home. Um, so we've just made it work. I mean, especially now that we're in Nashville. I mean, when I was home in Virginia, it was a lot easier because my mom was there. My dad was right. there. You know, my sister was there. My brother was there. So there was always someone there with being here it's a bit different because it is just us, you know? Um, so it's a balance. It's a, it's respecting each other's times. It's not talking about wrestling 24 seven when we're home, we don't talk about it. You know, if we made that decision early on in our career that we're not going to sit here and discuss work at the dinner table, unless it was a necessity. Um, so, I and mean, we'll talk about hot topics or we'll talk about different things, but it's not a daily conversation for sure. I know we're getting to the end of this interview, and I don't want this interview to go without me asking this question, but this Friday, Hard to Kill, Friday the 13th, it's sold out. You can get it on pay-per-view any place you get your pay-per-views. If it doesn't go your way, are you at peace with walking away? Because Father Time's undefeated. It still feels like, sure, you've done everything, but 
boy, everything you're doing still feels original and still feels fresh and new. Thank you. Can you can you still just go? I, I'm at peace with ending my career Friday night. Um, I think I'll feel that true emotion Friday night, depending on the match I deliver on Friday night. You know, I hope win or lose that I go out there and have, uh, you know, the match of a lifetime. And I, I feel that my opponent, um, Jordan, I they feel like she's going to give me that. And I feel like she wants to give me that. Um, so I, yeah, I think I'll be satisfied. I do. No matter what happens, I'll be sad. Don't get me wrong because when any relationship ends, it's heartbreaking, but, um, yeah, definitely satisfied. Well, I'm going to be watching live and my money is on you, Yes. but I feel like that's a losing fucking bet to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. You don't have a lot of faith in me. No, I do. I do. <laughs> well, uh, well now that this conversation, the way it, where it's gone, it's kind of tipped me off, but, uh, I guess for me, at the end of the day, if I had one question I wanted to ask you, is there a place that you never got a chance to work at if this is your last match? I mean, is um, is there still anything in the back of your mind that you kind of go, fuck, I wish I would have gone there or I could have done yeah. that? Or I mean, I wish I would have been on that South African tour. That would have been cool. Um, I wish I wish I would have had a chance to wrestle in Japan, but and not because I've only gone with WWE. So I've only gone that style. I've never been to Japan. I think um, I was at, at the same hotel as you guys in Japan when you were over there. Where it has the Ferris wheel out the window. I could yeah, see the Ferris wheel from my yeah. window and I did a little walk through a little walking market yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Because I, th I think I was, I was next door to the Nate. Oh, were you? Oh, were you up God. all night? Well, no, I just remember, uh, <laughs> I, I got a story. It can be. We can't tell. No, tell it. <laughs> no, you want me to tell it? No, <laughs> don't tell there. it. Not on <laughs> there. Not on there. <laughs> no, I love you. Don't don't tell it. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, I got nothing bad to say about. Yeah, anybody. no. You know, it's it's like it's like this. If I don't know you, I got nothing bad to say about you. If you got something bad to say about me, then then that's that's when the tables turn, right? Right. But so I mean, but yeah, that's what I was gonna say is is the Japan thing. I thought yeah. may, maybe that would be your your answer. Yeah. Um, do you did now? But the second part of my question is: is even if you got an opportunity to go over there and wrestle, I mean, even though because it's it's a different country and you're not technically mm -hmm. retired there, would you take that opportunity to retire in Japan or just go? I, don't I would know. love to go. I would definitely take the opportunity to go because I've never been. I've I mean, I've been in Mexico and that's the different language and it's a different style. Right. Um. So and I've def I've wrestled in Japan, just not the Japanese style and well, Japanese promoters, Japanese, Japanese yeah. promoters, listen to this because Mickey James is available. And I think that she would be a hell of a talent to bring over to Japan and have some great matches. Just yeah. saying. And hopefully I'll be out, you know, obviously I must be the champ because I'd, I'd have to still be wrestling in order to do that. So yeah. we'll see after Friday. If I win a Friday, then hit me up because I <laughs> well, might about, come out there. But, she, but okay, let's not get into this match. Now. Uh, Go ahead. But is there any truth to the rumor that you only put your career up in this match in order to get our attention so we would invite you onto this <laughs> podcast? Uh, I did. How did you know that? Who I told the dirt you sheets. That? I read it online. Yeah. Uh, oh, and that's Meltzer. I just had to read it. It was meltersbaby.com. Right, yeah, yeah, it was right under WWE being sold to Saudi Arabia. So uh -huh. I, you know. let, me, let me ask you about that, Mickey, real fast. Like, let's just say that these rumors are true and it hasn't been confirmed. Right. But I mean, we're talking about a completely different culture. Yeah. A completely different culture now getting a hold of an American entertainment. Do you do you, does that would you be worried as a woman's wrestler? Uh, I do think it, it, I do think it does say something about, um, you know, from the women, um, to, uh, people, you know, to our gay community and, and how they're represented or how, what, you know, happens there. I do don't think that even if, if the Saudi Arabians were going to buy it, I don't feel like they're going to come in and change the infrastructure or change anything. They just want to own it. Right. Like you see it on the golf tour thing. You see it with a lot of soccer clubs. Um, they own a couple of them. 
So I don't know that the actual they're going to change anything in that sense, but I do think it changes how the public views the product in the sense of do we lose American TV rights? Um, what about the tribute to the troops? What happens there? Um, also, what about the comfort level, obviously, of, you know, anyone who happens to be gay on the roster or even the comfort level of a female on the roster, you know, and I don't, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like the same people are still going to be in charge and maybe running it if that happens, where I think things would change. And this is what we were talking about earlier, where I think things might change is if an American company like a Comcast or a Disney bought it, they are more likely to change the infrastructure um, right. within. Right. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting times. Well, Mickey, you have a busy Friday night ahead of you. Uh, just so you know, per your contract, if you do win the Impact Knockouts Championship, you have to come on the show every week until you lose it. So, unfortunately, wow. I didn't read that. Yeah, part. yeah it's, and, it's, and you actually have to go to Japan to do that. Yeah. Right. Oh, it was in the link when I clicked it. It was right yeah. underneath the link. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. By clicking yeah, this link, you've agreed to be on the <laughs> to show all every... of these things. Yeah, that yeah. We're owned, we're, I, I forgot to tell you, we're owned by a Saudi Arabian company. So now, wow. We just sold. Good. Thanks. You're Thank sold. you so much. We just that. sold. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mickey. Where can people find you? What what do you um, because this is your time to shine now? Yeah, well, thank you. Uh that you can go to MickeyJames.com and pretty much find everything that I'm doing, whether it be impact, whether it be God TV, whether it be busted open, music. Uh, um, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter. You can type in my name. I have the check mark. The only place I don't have the check mark is on TikTok because I don't know what I'm doing there. Um, and I have have a Facebook fan page where a lot of people who are on Facebook, you can go over there. But yeah. Go to my website. You can see all the things. Click all the links. Follow well, all just, the things. Well, I just want to say Busted Open has been made better by your presence on that oh, show. Oh, thank you. I do enjoy it a lot. And good luck on Friday. I will be watching and rooting for Jordan. What the? I mean, I mean, rooting for Mickey. Sorry. I, I got the... confused. Wow. I got confused. That's fucked I got, up, man. I got wow. confused. I got Mickey, confused. thought we were friends. Mickey, uh, we Mickey are. that hurt my soul for you. It, uh, it stabbed wow. me deep in my heart. Wow. <laughs> All right. It's, well, listen. It's, it's uh, you know I got the Vince is in my my head. He's trying to get in my head is what he's trying to do. <laughs> well, I'm gonna end this before he puts his foot in his mouth <laughs> anymore with you. I got uh, water to wash it down, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's guys a so lucky water bottle too. You see it? Well, see, this is my son's high school, but I should. Oh, nice. I, I just off. stole it from him. Go ahead. Well, listen, uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us here on the Wrestling Perspective. Anytime. Make sure you go follow Mickey James on every other place, even on TikTok. I have not been to your TikTok, though. I'll be well, honest. Well, you would not be impressed because, like I said, I don't really know what I'm doing. All right. I'm also don't. 45, it's fine. so I shouldn't it's be a, It's a page. It's a landing page, and there's people there. Oh. And I make videos sometimes. Whether they're good or not, that's to be debated. But go but follow I, her on TikTok, everyone, right now. Pause the video. Go, go follow. do it right now. Yes. But uh, everybody at home, the show's over. Make sure you go link, subscribe, leave a comment everywhere you do podcasts for Busted Open Online for us, Wrestling Perspective. We're like their cousins now, right, Lars? Oh. Uh, uh, Ill illegitimate, illegitimate. Illegitimate cousin. Yeah. Or like like third cousin, you know, where they're like, I'm oh, okay. yeah, that's that's my cousin. Yeah. We're, we're, we're podcast kissing cousins now. This is awesome. Wow. We're in Weird. red. We're inbred deep <laughs> south. All right. Uh, Mickey, thank you so much for spending some time with us tonight. And uh, thank we you guys. Really appreciate you hanging out. Oh, I can't wait. And so I'm going to see you in Atlanta, Lars. Things happening, you know, in the world of wrestling. I mean, it's hard to, you know, throw a rock and not hit something that's like shaking up the system. I tell you what, I would pay to be at the McMahon family Christmas party this coming year because that. <laughs> Has to be a great shindig. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, yes, yes. I think that would be very fun. Uh, Mickey James will be up here in a little bit. We're going to get to as many emails as we can before she shows up. And uh, we'll just knock them out. We promised we get to them all. We're going to get to them all. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Bill from Kansas City wants to know, uh, Dennis and Lars, what are both of your favorite local promotions where you live? West Coast Pro for me. Um, there's also a new startup uh, indie called Oasis Pro, which I haven't been to yet. But uh, I have, and you know, 
for me, West Coast Pro, I go at pretty much every show. All right. Uh, for me, there's a couple. XICW is a good one. Clash. Uh, I like Clash a lot here in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, there's Sanctuary. Uh, Sanctuary is a great one. I'm trying to think of what else. There's one more. Uh, Insane Revolution, I think it's called. That's uh, Rhino's Promotion um, down in Monroe, Michigan. All those are great. Uh, and listen, if you give me free tickets, I'll go to whatever local promotion you want me to. I am a whore for free stuff. Well, you know, it's so Vinny Massaro, who was who has been a guest on this podcast, uh, does uh, a lot for the school and West Coast Pro. I think he's even on maybe on the book. He helps book it. So, I, you know, he, he's always been very gracious with me. And so I have a standing ticket there. So that's that's pretty cool because I get to go, you know, and then I can bring whoever I like. So they're really nice people, super accommodating. And you get to see so many great stars from. I mean, I've seen stars from Noah, Pro Wrestling Noah, New Japan, AAA, you know, the list goes on on and on. Maggie from Bulgaria, which, Whoa. She a, yeah, she has a Whoa. podcast here on uh, Fightful, which I love it. Uh, Maggie and Rob have one great show. I've been a guest on that once. You should do it. It's a oh, fun I'd love one. to. It's a I'd fun one. Uh, Maggie wants to, says, I love how you and Lars, Dennis and Lars, casually rip on each other throughout the interviews. Do you guys ever get mad at each other? No. No. Uh, the, I, I will say this. We used to have a guy that hosts a show with us who uh, didn't know how to take a joke. So no. I we would we do it, and then we get these hateful texts about how I'm not funny or I don't know how to host a show. And I made it quite clear with Lars. Like, look, make fun <laughs> of me all you want. When when it just became Lars, I and Petey, I said, make fun of me all you want. I can take a joke. If I need to be the butt of it, do it. Uh, I'm all about the laugh. And Lars – yeah. You said I mean, the same I, thing. Yeah, I mean, I I grew up in a place where you can you couldn't take yourself too seriously. You know, there was no room for any kind of narcissistic behavior. And I and I honestly believe that if if you can't make fun of yourself or just make fun of everything in the world, then you suck. Yeah. So you just suck, and probably somebody I just don't want to be around. You know, because that's it, that that always you know when people can't be self-deprecating or 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 take a joke they just they're just telling me how stuck up their own ass they are you know but i will say it's it took me a little bit to ease in and get comfortable with kind of a a little jab or a joke here and there at you because well shut the fuck up and get on to the next goddamn question dennis jesus christ no one gives a (laughs) shit about how you feel about this you're right uh michael from arizona who's the most famous person you know that listens to your podcast me Yeah, Lars, maybe. Uh, I, you know, I don't get ah. many people that say they listen to the podcast at all, honestly. And if you're famous and you listen, email us at Wrestling Perspective Podcast. Yeah. No, no, Wrestling I, Perspective I actually, at gmail.com. But honestly, I get a lot of feedback from a lot of different people, a lot of different kinds of people. And, uh, you know, it's probably some of the wrestlers that we've interviewed along the way that's maybe the most famous. I, I don't, I haven't really kept a tally or stats, but, uh, I do know that it has come across the ears of some um, some some higher profile uh, people in the world. Let's just say. Well, if you're famous and you listen, thank you. If you're not famous, get famous and then tell everybody about it. So, uh, D from Hazelton, John Cena's bald spot. Go. I don't really care too much about John Cena, so you know it's like, uh, you know, uh, God bless him. I mean, if there is a God. Yep. And that bald spot was amazing. I don't know if you've seen the picture or not. I'll have no, to send it to you. You know, I I don't really, I, you know what? It's, I feel like when people like uh, John Cena, who's done so much for humankind, which, cause he really has yeah. with all of his charity work and all the things that he's done, regardless if I'm a fan of his or not, uh, I don't really, you know, want to kick some dude who's not really down, first of all. And number two, <laughs> For having a bald spot, I think that's uh, it's fucking stupid. If I could be down like he's down right now, I'd be all right. I wish I, I was mean, John Cena down. But, but I mean, here's a guy that's like literally goes out of his way to like you know make little kids happy or give you know little kids their dreams, their wishes. I cannot fault that guy. I mean, like I said, I don't like him as a regular. I never a uh, wrestler. I don't like never liked his gimmick. Never. I understood why he was so big. He he had a certain charisma, 
and I'll always go back and protect him because like I said, he, uh, you know, gave him, me his time of day. So, but I, I can't beat up a guy for a bald spot, you know? Uh, yeah. Cause I'm still young. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that karma to come back at me. Uh, Kurt Franklin wants to know, can you both talk about your thoughts on Dominic Mysterio jr? I, I love what this kid has done. I was one of those few, I wouldn't say few, but I was one of the early guys that like, you know what? He's riding his dad's coattails. He won't be anything more than he is now, but what he's done in the past six to eight months, dude, this kid's legit. I, I, I love everything Dominic Mysterio Jr. is doing right now. There's, if he can continue this, like this growth and showing different sides, and you know, I, turning heel is the best thing that ever happened to him right now. I definitely think that him turning heel was the best thing that he could have done. Uh, I do like, you know, I, I like him a lot more recently than I have in the past. I've never thought he was riding his daddy's coattails. Because they're obviously two different wrestlers. Um, you know, obviously there's no one ever going to be like Ray. You know, um, I definitely think that he's in on that path to get out of his father's shadow. I mean, Cody, I think, is long out of his father's shadow. So is Dustin, even though a lot of people want to bring that up and compare them to their dad. But that's unfair to the to the spawn, really, just because it's two totally different you know, learning curves. So, and that's one of the things you got to remember, you cannot look at Rey Mysterio's career and in the same pair of glasses, look at Dominic Mysterio. You just can't do it. It's just not fair to either one. Um, I, and, uh, but yeah, I think, you know, I think the little bandana, bandana thing is, is, eh, you know, I mean, it, it looks, looks a little too contrived, but um, then again, it's WWE yeah. gangster. If, if, gangster yeah, but I mean, but, but, but you, but I, you know, for, I think that a lot of people aren't going to take that seriously because no. of, of what it is, because uh, he's not, a, he's not like one of those guys where you look and you think he's tough. No. He's a, he, he's a chicken shit, you know, a heel kind of trip. So to, to dress him up like a like a cholo mexican gangster kind of style thing or or just gangster kind of thing i don't know it just doesn't you know i knew real cholos growing up Dominic mysterio you know albeit part probably maybe part of his culture or whatever his growing up i don't know i, I don't know dominic but uh but uh yeah i just think it's kind of it's a little hokey it's a little little hard to get behind Miguel from Reno, the landscape of pro wrestling has drastically changed since you had Tony Khan on the show. Uh, Ring of Honor isn't the same since Ian Riccoboni has been on the show as well. What are your thoughts on how pro wrestling has just changed in that short of time? Also, congrats on the, the announcement of the radio show. Will you guys be taking phone calls? Um, not right away. We've talked about it. It's in our court. Mm -hmm. Uh XM has been kind enough to say whatever we want to do, we can do. But we want to kind of do this, kind of keep it the same format. Uh, who knows if we both find time in our lives. You know, Lars is going overseas. He's having a kid. Uh, I'm busy yeah. uh, waiting on Lars to get home. <laughs> but uh, we've talked. Maybe if this translates well into a radio show, maybe we'll add something else to it. But we just talked about it, but the landscape of wrestling, this guy, I mean, even now we got this email last week before the whole WWE stuff yeah. came down yeah. Yeah. that alone. But mm. I, I mean, let me ask you this, because uh, mm. you have this and we'll probably talk about this with her, but not to this extent with Mickey James in a few minutes. You, you have the backlash from WWE going to Saudi Arabia. Everybody saying, well, we don't know if that's completely true just right. yet, but I'm it's leading into a what if question though. If, right. uh, you, you have everybody talking about the blood money and how they won't watch if WWE is over in Saudi Arabia. What's the backlash if a Saudi Arabian cup? I mean, you see what happens with the live golf tournament right now. What happens to WWE if a Saudi company does buy them? You know, that's a good question. The first thing I thought about is like anytime that they're in those Middle Eastern countries, I believe that the women have to basically, they can't wear anything short or anything, you know, uh, revealing, you know? 
-hmm. So I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Um, I definitely know that from my own experience that that's, I don't necessarily know if that culture is entirely open-minded. I don't know. I mean, you know, even Christianity and other sort of religions are closed-minded to a, to a certain degree, but I mean, I don't want to get lost in all that stuff or offend anybody if that's, you know, what, you know, actually I don't give a fuck if I offend you. Um, no. But my point is, I guess, is that I don't necessarily know if it's, if it, it'll, I don't know. I mean, there are westernized kind of, I don't know, Dennis, it's a hard one. You know, it's a very I, hard one. I will say this. Uh, one of my best friends, Pud, shout out to him, who actually just broke his neck in a car accident uh, a couple weeks ago. So he's healing up, sent me a text when it looked like the Saudis were buying a WWE. And he says, I'm done watching WWE to this moment on. I will go back and watch all the great stuff from the 90s, the Attitude Era, the 80s stuff. But from this moment on, I'm not following the product. Yeah, I, I think that there's other choices than just going back into the past. I mean, I, I think you got NWA. I think you got MLW. I think you got Impact. I mean, I think if you like the circus show, you can watch AEW. That's more like an outlaw indie kind of thing. Um, so I, and there's New Japan. There's Japanese wrestling. There's deathmatch wrestling. There's so much choice out there. That regardless if the WWE gets sold um, to a to a totally different country, um, then I, I, I'm 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 sure there, it would be business as usual. I don't necessarily know if there would be that many changes. I don't. But I, don't, I mean, I don't think they're they're smart businessmen. It's I too, mean, to, yeah. I mean, it's but yeah. But if they start, I I feel like where the I think where attention would be created is in culturally, because America is definitely way different culturally than any of the Middle Eastern countries. That's just a fact. It's that's not, you know, anything other than just fact, you know, and if you've been to any of those countries, you would see it for yourself. It's very closed and very. Um, yeah, I, I will fact. say one thing. You hit on something that will be interesting if they bought this company and, you know, as of. You know, this recording, they've not been sold. Vince is back, but they've not sold. But I think that's actually more of a detriment to the product than it getting sold is having, you know, okay. Vince McMahon back. I think that 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 I don't know. I just I think feel his like time it's is done. His time is long past done. It's been past done for a for for a while. And it's just the show and the momentum and the and the wrestling and everything else. And the, I mean, it, that show was just like a freight train moving forward, you know? But the, the one thing uh, you said to watch out for is what rules, if, if a Saudi company did buy them, what rules would change for women wrestling? I mean, can you wear the bikinis again? Are you going to have to, you know, even though it's probably an American company on American soil with, with uh, you know, an American audience, are they gonna are they gonna implement Saudi values into that? Pro you you just don't know. Yeah, I mean, I I would have to to do a deep dive into Saudi politics and Saudi, you know, because I mean, a lot of those Middle Eastern countries are religious, right? So what is in line or or in in tow of their societies? So I'm a I don't necessarily know if if they would you know, sort of enforce those types of, of ideology onto a company that's making a lot of money. I don't know. I mean, this it's, it's, it's going, it's a debate, it's a debate and it's, there's, a, I'm sure there's a lot of opinions and uh, I don't know. With I don't all really, things, yeah, go ahead. All things being equal, if a Saudi company does want to buy this podcast, we are listening. Uh, <laughs> um, just know that uh, we are slightly more cheaper than the WWE is. No, not we're not. Much, but no, just not, no, no, we're not. No. no, we're open to negotiations. We'll just no, uh, honestly, uh, the reason why I love this podcast is because there is no fucking bosses. Me no. and you are the bosses. You're the boss. I work for you. You're the boss, pal. No, I'm Sasha boss. Um, you're Sasha Banks. Yeah, that's right. Money. Uh, I don't even know how she does it. That was the lamest thing I've ever done. Yeah, Thank it you. was.
Uh, I, I, but I will say uh, here in a couple minutes, Mickey James will come up. Thank you so much for your emails this week. Uh, remember, wrestlingperspective at gmail.com. Shoot us an email. We love to hear about your thoughts, your hot takes, your opinions. You can ask us any kind of questions. Uh, we do have one more question, and this will wrap up the segment before Mickey shows up. What is your – I didn't even look at the name. I'll have to go back here. Uh, Jane H. from Atlanta, what is your Mount Rushmore of favorite all-time tag teams? Top four. Top Ooh. four all-time favorite tag teams. Uh, well, I, I, these, go ahead. Do you want to go first? I, I would say you and I should alternate from four to one. Um, I mean, it'll be loose. I don't see that's, I don't, I don't want to do that because I mean, I, I couldn't rank the top four. It would just yeah. be, the, it would just be top four. I couldn't go number four. Yeah. You know? See, that's in, in, I think you can make a case for number one in each of these, but for favorites, uh, Legion of Doom Road Warriors would be on that list. Um, Rock and Roll Express. Mm -hmm. ah, boy, this is this is super tough. Um, do you have two? While I think of two more, well, mine would be you know, Rock and Roll Express and the Heart Foundation for sure. Uh, also would give a big shout to Gold Dust and Stardust. I love that tag team. I actually, if you can see, I have a little painting of Gold Dust and Stardust right there. But uh, and a, probably the number one team or something like that. It probably the Midnight Express or, I mean, there's been so many great. I mean, I'm four four Mount four people on four faces on Mount Rushmore, so that's four teams, right? So who else you got? Ah, boy, I might say Demolition. I keep going back and forth. Is it Demolition or the Nasty Boys? Because there was just something about either one of those tag teams during that era. I love the Nasty Boys too. I, I would I would obviously have to pick the Road Warriors, you know. But I mean, it's very hard to pick a top four. It really is. I mean, and then do you go the one-off tag teams like uh, uh, Hogan Savage? I mean, they were a tag team. They yeah, had a tag team yeah. name. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, true. I'm not sure I could put them on there. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. there's just so many of those two guys that, uh, you know what? I, maybe uh, uh, Randy Orton and Edge. Randy Orton and Edge. Rated RKO. Right. Yeah. I, I see, but that's how good they were. I forgot about them. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm just thinking those traditional t tag teams. The I mean, Gold Dust and Stardust, the whole, I mean, Ole and Arn. I mean, that was a fucking powerhouse. Like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, shit, the, the Russians, man, Nikita and Ivan. But then there was, you know, obviously Crusher was part of that trip. Um, well, Barry Darso, you know, yeah. so Barry Darso was, I mean, I mean, there's so many great tags. There's so many great tags. I love, <laughs> I mean, FTR. How do you not put FTR or the Briscoes on there too? It's, it's, it's hard. But I, number one, I would say I could pick a number one. That's easy. And that's the Hart Foundation, Bret Hart and Jim the Anvil. But, you know, two through 10, man, that's tough. That's what, tough. Well, give me one tag team everybody loved, but you never got. Because I always kind of like that question more than the, what's your the, favorite. <laughs> the Can-Am Express. Um, uh, let's see here. One tag team that everybody loved, but I never got. I'm, I'm going to say, uh, boy, uh, Young Bucks. Yeah, I'm going to have to say that too. I, I you know... I, I had a period where I did enjoy what they did, but I feel like it never really progressed. You know, it it kind of stayed the same kind of thing. It's just flip floppity floppity flip. There's really no. It was exciting when you first saw it, right? PWG, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, it was really you know it was different. You know, it was very high spotty and and very lucha esque. So I, I could get my mind around it, but uh, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't, I, now these days, I, I feel like anytime I see one of their matches, I've seen it before. 
I, I, I think they're great on the mic. And when they play a Hill character, that's great. But for me, and it's not an insult to them because uh, they've done something a lot of tag teams can't do. And they've take that indie style and brought it to TV. But for me as a, I, I would say I'm more of a traditional television wrestling fan. Yeah, I, I'm nothing against, you know, them and their talent, you know. No. But uh, it, it, as a fan, when I watch it, it doesn't translate well to me. I mean, it's almost like that same question we got last week with Kenny Omega. Why is Japan Kenny Omega uh, well, cause, so much yeah, better yeah. than American? Well, like I said, I feel like he's more of an anime character. <laughs> yes. You know, I think that that's how he translates. I, well, I really honestly think that he could be a guy, you know, even his name is a guy in a in a manga. You know what I mean? So... You know, I, I don't know. Well, I, I, I tell you what, we'll wrap this up. Uh, before we do, uh, this will be out before Friday the 13th. You yeah. are having another auction coming up on that Friday. Uh, I am. At 1.30, 1 o'clock p.m.? Uh, it's 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right. Make sure you guys get over to What Not, right? I believe is That's the What Not, yeah. Yeah, if you go to any of my socials, whether it be uh, – I, most of the time on my Lars Fredrickson page, I'll put it up in the stories. Um, and there's a link normally that will get you straight to my page. And what you want to do is bookmark it and then follow me because when you bookmark the show, you get a reminder in case like you have something, you know, 20 other things like I have to do in a day. But if you go over to Laz's Laka in the, uh, the bio, you can just click on that link. And if you click on that link, you get $10 off of your first purchase. And right now I'm doing this thing. And I'm, uh, a lot of updates. I've got a new uh, thing happening with them this year. Uh, it's going to be a lot of really cool things. I'm going to be giving away a guitar at one point. Um, one of my own personal signature uh, models with my signature pickups. I'm going to be doing a big show around that. But this next show is a record show. So it's all of my personal vinyl. That I, it's like my doubles or stuff that I just haven't listened to in years. I mean, I've let go of some of the very, you know, some of the first records I've ever bought just because I don't listen to them anymore. And, you know, I figure, I feel like people would, would enjoy them more, you know, and than I, will I say do this, at this point. As a guy who has popped in and watched many of your, your whatnots, uh, it's really cool because if you win the bid, he signs it right there on camera, whatever you want inscribed into it. So yeah. you don't get that from any other auction house anywhere. So even if you don't go to buy, go to watch and just catch that vibe because it is very interactive, very fun, and I enjoy watching it. But uh, WrestlingPerspective, gmail.com, make sure you get your questions, hot takes, anything you want us to discuss or talk about with you. We will do it. Mickey James, when we come right back.